Ma- <laughs> <laughs> and he can't delete it. He can't even delete it. It's a, it's a round of pros bullying the rest of us in this situation. Is Outside of Crackity here, who is a top 100 player, the rest of these people, half of them aren't ranked. Another one is like 3,000th in the world and, and so on and so forth. So this does feel a little bit skewed. And you know what? I'm outraged. I am outraged right now because the way this could have been fair is if you stuck Salami and Core on the same island. But instead, look at this. We, we've got a bunch of corner campers on an island map as it looks like Core is poshing right next to two players. Oh. Guys, guys, kill, kill him. Do it. Kill him. Do it. Yes. Yes. Let the core head flow through you. Yes. We'll have to see if that worked. Hopefully it worked. <laughs> it's, the <b> <laughs> it's a little bit biased to me, but hopefully it works. I mean, you know, you got to balance this, right? Like, Korra and, and Salami and Crackety here should be clear front runners. Uh, wait a second. So, one thing I'm checking for is you have to remember that Omega Random Nomad... <laughs> <laughs> and he can't delete it! He can't even delete it! You need to place your TC first. Uh, so, yeah, the thing I was going to say is on Mega Random Nomad, you have three villages that spawn randomly around the map and you don't have your TC started. You have to build it. And I am noticing a slight something. Uh, you can hide, but I can see you, sir. I know you're there. That's a salami villager as well. <laughs> Any more? Any more? Are you stuck, Step Villager? You look a little bit. You look a little bit stuck. All right. It looks like there's only two stuck in the end. The rest are free to reign supreme across the map. And look, look, dude. Like, by the way, can we just talk about like how uppity this animation is? The spear. Like you look like you're gonna slap yourself around the face. Careful. It looks like Quintus at least has his two villies. He was actually going to park right next to Salami as well, which would have been amazing. Actually, mm. the two pros just get teamed by two players. But it looks like instead, Affy's going to be left in a 1v1. And I, I couldn't find Affy anywhere on the leaderboards. No stats to do with this player. So we'll have to see if they can actually hold, if they can actually deliver. Because they're in a one-on-one, -on -one, while Core has to face a two-on-one -on -one here. And apparently, I think someone said Tyloma is a decent player. So Core might be in trouble. It depends on whether Tyloma attacks Torpal. Meanwhile, having his own island, little Zenic over here. Another player I couldn't find any stats on, but he has got a potent sieve in the English. English actually can dominate on the waterfront if they're anywhere near their outpost, right? Because they get the attack speed buffer so they can win those naval battles. And right now, he's parked on an island all in his lonesome. Meanwhile, the opposite end of the bigger island, it looks like Crackety actually got a nice positioning, especially the Chinese, in a situation where there are multiple opponents who are stacked next to the waterfront. So Bao Chads could actually beast this game as it goes on we'll to see if that does occur and also even the north right you can wrap around this island so we actually could see some naval dominance i think this is actually the first time that we've gotten to see water matter in a mega random so i'm pretty hyped for this Did someone say are oh, those gold wait <laughs> we missed one looks like another little step billy got stuck at least he's got a sheep to keep him company. Like, <laughs> what is this? I mean, in fairness, Crackety, I, I don't know if you can build a dock here. You maybe can. I'm not sure how if it would be impacted by the gold. But if you can build a dock here, like, you, you know, you could sneak back on the land. This is remarkable. You know what I love as well? None of these little baby islands are big enough for you to rat a landmark. However, you know what a, you know what a certain Mongol player could do? They could always just pack up a landmark and stick it on one of these islands. Right, 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 right. Actually, I feel like there's, there's no way. You must be able to. Yeah, there's, I'm pretty sure you can garrison landmarks inside uh, transport ships. I just haven't seen it in so long that I'd actually forgotten for a sec there. Actually, I don't, I don't know if I've ever seen it used. I'm pretty sure you can, though. Can you not? Maybe you can't. I guess it's a building, right? So it would be a little bit wacky. But my, my thought process is actually like... that. That's weird to me that you can't. Simply for the fact that like... Remember the bugs around um, packed up buildings count towards pop cap? So it was actually registering as a, as a unit. But you couldn't garrison them. You couldn't garrison them in, in transport ships. Like, that's kind of weird. 
So yeah, it looks like there won't be any cheeky shenanigans hiding your final outpost on an island then. Good confirmation coming out from chat. Yeah, it makes sense though. Like it would be kind of busted. Like you could actually just deny your opponents winning the game by like smuggling a building completely elsewhere. So understand why it's that way. I mean, and there is a fair point to this, like, ludicrousness, right? Like, I think some people point out, like, you can get an elephant into an, an outpost like it's a, a clown car, which is a fair statement. Um, and then I think, like, inside a ram, you can also fit a bunch of, of Ellie's, right? Or even just cavalry. How the hell did cavalry get inside a ram? Like, let's not get into this discussion. I, I don't think AOE4 was built for realism. Because if it was, then... No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna make that that completely yobbish comment of the English would always win. <laughs> England. Anyway, um, no. Instead, let's focus on the game because right now it looks like someone's about to throw away a Khan for free. Whoopsie. And it looks like Krakadi is gonna be the dominant force on the naval side, right? You'd expect this out of China anyway, about charts and so on. But realistically, like it's the production rate as well. Like the Chinese do it 20% faster, so they're pretty easily bolstered. And while I am expecting some fight coming out of this sole English player in green on the Eastern Island here, I don't feel like Zenit's going to be able to match up against the Bao Chaz late game. The aura will allow him to match earlier points, though, if he's able to fight underneath outposts and underneath the town bells. Meanwhile, Salami. Wait, where is Salami's go? Uh, Salami has very limited gold. Very limited gold. Oh my god, I'm Wait, what? Okay, Crackley's coming for his, his villager. But like this... And he's trying to outpost him as well. So he's denying him additional wood. This is a very limited amount of resource for Salami to work on. Like, he, he's got his work cut out here, folks. Don't think this is just an insta-win. Like, he got crappy resource spawn. He got deer. And he got wood. And admittedly, he did hunt down a decent amount of games. Something that other players didn't seem to prioritize. But like, overall, this is not really the golden standard that we're used to seeing in like, these corner campers. Like the core over here where he's actually blocked the other Mongol player off of the gold. Oh, you vile scumbag. He doesn't even have enough gold to go up. Look what he's had to do. Tyloma has to pull all the way to the north just to find a, a backup gold vein. But he does at least have the fish, something that it looks like all these players are moving into now as Torpor and Core will build on the west side here. A frustrating situation actually for the Abbasid player because it means you're going to get a disadvantage because once you start pushing Dows on light junks, light junks are cheaper for similar damage output, it does feel like you're going to get overwhelmed. All right. Mr. Ratatouille, what is next on the hit list? How are you going to fix this? Salami, he does have enough to tech up, and that's the good news, right? So he'll tech up and he'll get good trades with the gold. So he'll be able to sustain even without a gold vein for a while. Uh, but right now, that gold vein, well, Afi needs to use it. In fact, Afi, like, this is actually a very, very weird placement of this TC. You're next to berries, you're next to gold, but he hasn't upgraded the berries. And he took ages to go in the wood. And as a result, he doesn't even have his scholars yet. Uh... I think Orange is about to be his worst own enemy. Like, I, I don't know what the thought process was with this. He didn't even go fishing yet because he needed the wood, right? Instead, he's just trying to snipe Salami. So it's literally just, okay, so he's sacrificing all scalability to screw over our hot dog man here. And he won't stop and get the Golden Gate, but he's making sure he has no room to build anything. He's going to have to tighten the, the grip, though, if he wants this to work out 100%. Just to point out, by the way, Mega Random is always randomly rolled sieves. So, like, people didn't choose what they're going to select here. I'm pretty sure, like, if you could choose, uh, China would not be allowed for anyone. Especially one of the top three players in the lobby in Crackity here. who have got a cracking spawn spot as well. But, yeah, it feels like Afi's missing a few tricks here. He's even building the Dome of Faith without a mosque. Oh, it's hot. And it looks like with this tight formation, Salami still has enough room to build the archer range. And this is going to be a ram play. And he can afford it now due to the Golden Gate. So efficient use of his space. In the meantime, he's going to start building on the seat. And got a tack ship to defend this extension. 
and unlikely to be harassed on the seat by Crackity anytime soon as Crackity is just starting to bolster himself in the left corner. Meanwhile, back in Mongol Town, looks like Core is just trying to establish a network of outposts here, make sure there's no pressure directly into him. Oh, this could be interesting, actually. So Zenek doesn't even need transpo ships. He actually has a walk across point in both. Okay, not this direction. Definitely in this direction, though. And it looks like Zenek is going to wall himself in, though. Make sure he's not harassed at all. Meanwhile, Quintus. What is this Kremlin? What? I, I mean, in fairness, it's a lot of resource gain, but usually you'll do this next to a woodline as well, so at least you get the wooden influence. Like, what the? Quintus? I mean, the name adds up. He's playing like a Roman. He just wants his walls and his defenses, clearly. I mean, this is this is not how you hold back the Barbarian Horde, though. Get some good trade, my friend. The Golden Gate is easily the best landmark in Tier 2 in the damn game from a generalist standpoint, and you're sacrificing it for coverage on an area which, which you could have done the same with a Wooden Fortress. I am a little bit perplexed by this one. Oh, meanwhile, Court. Hard on the wood. Like that he is. And as a result, he's going to chip through this very quick. And that's a little bit concerning because that is going to put him in direct contention with the two other players very faster. He wants all that wood because, of course, he's playing on the docks right now, but he's going to need to shift elsewhere. Now, with the deer stone, move to the south side. And it looks like he's now going to move down here. Remember, he did set up the outpost. I like this play. This is actually good. This is my worry. That's what I was trying to highlight. Like, Corey was in the middle of the mixer there. He's about to make himself like public enemy number one for these two players. But now they become each other's enemy. Oh no, Tyloma, the deer. Oh dear. Well, that's a shriveling up ego if I've ever seen one. And the worst part is he doesn't even need to be doing this. Like you're on the sea, man. Just, just don't do it. Just don't get any food on land. You don't need it. Meanwhile, north side, how are we looking with Salami? It's like he's going to dock both sides now. Ooh. This could become very oppressive. I don't think you necessarily want to build into attack ships here. Or rather archer ships. Because if you go with the archer ships, they'll take the bonus damage from the TC and die. But he can fish up here as well. But uh, there isn't much in the way of fish anyway. I think this is where the roosts are really beneficial. We haven't actually got to see how powerful the roosts can be in Mega Random. Because we never get this type of map spawn. But now you're talking about like a map where 50% of it is water. This sieve's going to benefit a lot, because remember, the roost, when they fish, they don't have to actually go back to the dock. They just, I don't know, convince the seagulls to carry the food back to shore and not eat it. And as a result, like, there's no idle time, right? The only idle time is as you shift towards a new fishing spot, which means that actually around the 30-minute mark, Salami could very easily find himself the most powerful player on the map. Oof, speaking of power... This is getting worry. Because I don't see any way that Crackity even has to get in a fight until he's hard into Imperial. Meanwhile, people that might struggle to even think about Castle in this bottom corner here. Core at least trying to give himself that wiggle room. Should be able to wiggle his way up as well. He's basically completely let loose on the southern side. And right now, it looks like that is being addressed by Ty Loma as he tries to get rid of the outposts. For the time being... Core is going to be okay with the double outpost here, with the layering he has in place. It's not going to be easy for you to breach with just five of these horsemen. And it looks like there is now going to be a response as Core does build in the stables. Realizes he's going to be forced to fight. And I'm starting to wonder what the hell's going on here, Paul. He calls himself tall, Paul, but there's nothing tall about this economy. This is this is some weak stuff right now. Like I, I said. That he didn't see, like he didn't have a high rank. And I, I think he's showing. I no offense to him when I say that. I just want to point out I'm not offending people. But in terms of the play style, very quick farms. The 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 lack of any sort of extension in secondary TC or military influence or whatever. He's incredibly boxed. And now, he, oh, now only now is he building the House of Wisdom. Like this is an Abasa player playing miles behind. In fact, he's quite lucky that he hasn't been raided by attack vessels yet. The only reason he hasn't, by the way, is because Core can't afford to build them and the fishing boats. Oh, cool. <laughs> okay, yep, that was that was ambitious. Well, Core has problems. And he needs to answer them quickly. In fact, what is this? Oh my god, you greedy you greedy pile of This is so typically Core. 
He wants the Castle Age, but look at his gold. He still has, he hasn't got enough. Finally, he'll gather the required quantity. But wh where are you building this? I mean, the Horseman could dive. Delay this? I just don't know if it's worthwhile to do. That being said, Ty Loma is already ahead of him, right? He beamed to the punchline. This is really impressive. Chat warned that Ty Loma was quite a, a capable player, and we're definitely seeing that. This should be where we start to see a push maybe into Lancers. Go for the dive, maybe. But now, he's just going to be a frustration. And that's a cancel building, so that's going to be 25 through 25 gold given over to Ty Loma. Cool. We'll go back to building, but this delay, it's stunting his ability to really push out here. And the horseman, in the meantime, continue to be a frustration, uh, falling in his side. But you do need to be careful with Ty Loma. You have at least spread out your landmarks, so no easier snipe down, but you really need to get the force out. And this, this feels like an over-calibration. Fixing a mistake that was made without having any troops out in the field, he's now going to push hard with four stables now being built. Right, we're built up to all the wild crackity with a cruise mode castle age here. Is no doubt the strongest player on the map. Shows in the scores, definitely shows in the way he's playing this game. Salami. Well, he's finally found a way to push out. And it looks like Afi is going to be pushed out this way. He's going to waff out of this way. Okay, I'm sorry. I tried for a pun. He admits, realize he made quite a few mistakes in this game. See, I'm going to stop. These are terrible puns. Fire me. Fire me now. As first player resigned, it is going to be Afi. And Salami now has a lot of boom room, but that room has been somewhat shrunk. You can see already that Quintus has carved up half of this island in the north. Will likely pose a bigger threat than Af was able to do. As it stands, is still looking like a baby-sized force. Do you have to worry about Crackerdy, who is starting to crack on up to the north side here, just scouting out what the layout of things are. Even more gold veins in the middle of nowhere, by the way. <laughs> Wait, what? And the fish as well. Damn, this is high value right here. Okay. Looks like we should start getting our lancers out now. Cool. Has plenty of gold on the backside. Wait, where's this? I swear I saw. Okay, he's got the second gold here. I guess this is kind of tough long term for Cool. If he doesn't kill Ty Loma in the next eight to ten minutes, like he's gonna run out of resources, so this will get a little bit floppy. I'm also worried that that Paul might cause problems soon. Even with small force could just distract long enough to give Ty Loma the edge. Like I think this guy is gonna turn the Kingmaker weirdly enough. He's not really building any sort of force at the moment. But even if he just starts pushing Spearman, right? It's the pop cap logic that eventually he can be a fawn in someone's side. Meanwhile, Salami. Wonder. Uh, oh. Oh. I don't need to wonder anymore. You know what he wants to do. He's got plenty of resources. Wait. What? Salami, hello. Oh, I get it. Salami's like this right now. Uh, Thank you, XO69, for the free bits. Uh, Thank you, Wada Wada Shiwada Wada, for the, the gifted sub. Much love. Uh, just uh, thank you for the follow, XO, XO, 69. Wait, I think we had that one already. Okay, and he's finally stopped now. There we go. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so Salami has quickly decided there could be only one Roos. Salami, why do you hate tech ups? There we go. Oh, we found the biggin. That's, a, that's quite a nice high trade house, actually. Straggler trees as well. Titty bounty, I want to say... 129? Actually, would it, could it be the... 132. I feel like this is 132. It's not as tight as it could be. Actually, mm, Wow. Some people think 250. Merlin, like, you are a magician if you can make that number happen. 280? 105? Guys. Lay off the vodka, it's way too early in the day. Alright, here we go. So I said 132, right? 198? What? Okay. Maybe... I'm getting my, I'm getting my magnification glass out here. I don't trust any of this. I can kind of see it now. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I can kind of see it. So, when I when I looked at it originally, I didn't expect 
So you can see some trees at the back here, just in range, like this one and the, the one here. Like, I wouldn't have expected that to be in range. Also, I wonder how it actually calculates. I'd have to check this. I would assume it's past the midpoint on the circle, but I'm starting to actually think the way that the, the, the cabin's calculation works is it's based on if a tiny piece of the circle at the base of a tree touches, then it's calculated. I think that's how it works. And I think that's why the number is quite high. It's kind of interesting to think about, actually. I'd have to go test that, but that would be my assumption. Um, I kind of, like, it's different from game to game. So, like, you know, if you play a League of Legends game, for example, the way they handle hitbox is very different to Dota 2. Same with the way StarCraft handle hitbox, like, calculations based uh, compared to Age of Empires 4. I, I, yeah, I would assume, like, for example, this tree here, you wouldn't think it's in range. I think that's in range. I think that's in range because when you hover on it, you can see the circle overlay. So, yeah, 198 gold on tier 2 bounty. Pretty damn good. Well, that's been happening, though. Well, I've been nerding out over the numbers. It looks like Quintus is gone. Damn, Salami. The Pew Pew boys came out to play. And wait. Paul's gone. <gasps> oh, wow. Core is unleashed. And he is flooding through. We got too distracted by the high trade house. Well, that was happening. Core found a way to ride forth. And it looks like Torpo, he just shrugged. He's like, I'm done here, whatever, because he was being assaulted by the Chinese. Oh my God, things just escalated fast here. The only rookie player left in this is Zenek Walegrus. Because as has been pointed out, Talem is a competent player. The other three are pro level, right? You've got Salami and Cool who play in tournaments as well as Crackity here. We haven't seen in tournaments yet, but he's ranked 100th in the world right now. This is where things are gonna get spicy. And we might actually see some Chinese on Roost Conflict here. Actually, I wouldn't be surprised if this turns into a little bit of a sea battle. We'll see. You can see there's a Cruel in right now. So Crackly, like, credit to him, actually. He's got a lot of vision on the map. Look, look how much on the map he sees. I actually love this approach to it. So you can kind of dictate the flow, spot where anyone is, and make his moves accordingly. Meanwhile, we haven't checked in on him in a while, but Zenic, well, he's actually building up a, a decent amount of infrastructure. Like, maybe not as uh, much a pushover as we may be suspecting here. He is insulating himself. He's going full War of Mario mode. I want to see what he can do with this, though. Like, this actually is a really, like, top-notch wonder spot, right? I could actually see him trying for a wonder victory here. It could be dope as well, because you can place it here, far enough away from the waterfront that it can't be sniped by naval. And then you just insulate yourself with stone walls. Maybe get some cheeky little towers on those walls as well. And all of a sudden, you're an absolute pain in the ass to try and breach. Especially with the positioning as well. Because as it stands, like Core and Tyloma might just blitz each other soon. They have to fight through each other. Same with the Chinese player coming, unless he comes by naval. Like it's quite interesting. Meanwhile, Salami. I wonder if he's considering a wonder victory as well. His isn't as tight, right? Like he can only hide the wonder from one side of Naval Siege, but like this is still pretty hard to reach. Like, actually, th this is the two to watch. I think it's one of these two are going to go for Wonder Victory. Uh, the smart thing to do would be to wait for at least one more player to be eliminated before you do so, because juggling three players is, is maybe feasible, but four is just overwhelming. People rooting for green to go for a Wonder. Hey, man, like, th this is for all of us, us common folk, us non-pros. Do it for us. Cheer him on now. Let him hear your voice. One issue, though, is he's going to run out of wood very fast here. So he will have to move off the island. Uh, this would be where it might be beneficial to move over here, kill these villagers or convert them before they yoink all the tree. I think Zanuck is ready to now go up. So, yeah, looks like he can get the Barkshire pass on the front line if he chooses. I'm expecting Barkshire. Like, high-level play, Wingard tends to be better, but, like, in this situation, like, like I said, I'm not quite sure what Xenix rank is. I'm kind of suspecting a Barkshire. If he's, like, your... If he's around, like, 11, 1200 ELO, I'd still expect Barkshire. Especially when you have a defensive holding like this, it seems more valuable. Right? In this choke point. Meanwhile, Salami. How are we looking? We're making our way up. It is high armory time. 
Everyone looking to join Crackity and Tyloma, who were, of course, the first players to make it into Imperial. And Crackity, ooh, 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 baby, building up fast. And he's going for trade. I didn't even notice this. Wow. And he's doing it the right way. Yes, Crackity, yes. So remember, folks, there's a neat trick you can do with your trade network. And the way it works is if you spawn your traders here next to the neutral, not the neutral trade post, and then you set the home trade point to this marketplace here and then begin trade, they'll gather from here, but instantly start returning the amount that they would actually get if they made the full distant run from this marketplace back here. The importance of it, it actually halves the amount of time it takes you to get your initial investment back on traders. Salami now moving up to Imperial in the meantime. It's starting to extend across this island. And meanwhile, oh, of course, going for him. And I'm worried now for Tyloma. Ty Tyloma just doesn't have an answer to this. The Lancer Flurry has just caught him completely off guard. He's going off the outpost right now. Isn't going for the landmark snipe because one of them has shifted away to the north side, but that north side might be exposed soon. But it looks like instead, Crackety might be prepping to assault onto Core. So Core needs to deal with this fast if he wants to try and survive. He's going to rush through now. Spearman. Not cutting it I, i'm kind of perplexed like how are you pushing Sp please upgrade them please okay thank god he's got the upgrades coming through but no lances not in a big enough quantity spearman not really answering and uh, wait 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 ba baby got back wait, wait, wait baby let's talk how are both of you pushing lances and neither of you has elite status what is going on in this game what get some gold you cheapskates oh no Wait, Core has got a core. Core. Okay, he's got a lead lancer now. It just came through. Yep, there it is. Gold hat upgrade. Meanwhile, on the other side, Tyloma. Tylona, as he can't even get more than an army of five together, it feels like. Actually, he's up at eight. Big credit to him. Just getting massacred right now. As it looks like Core is going to back off for the moment, realizing he's done plenty of damage here. Tyloma feeling like a small boy. Meanwhile, on the north, Salami. Stroking his chin right now, you know the you know the, the look I'm talking about. He's thinking, could a wonder victory do it here? And it looks like Zenik is going to answer that with a no, as he's actually moving to the north where Salami is situated, and he's gaining ground here. This is pretty cool. We talked about this with Zenik, right? He needs the wood. There's a lot of wood in this area, and Salami hasn't actually like staked it yet, right? He hasn't planted a flag in this area, not in a way that is going to deter Zenik at all. It looks like Salami. Did he make his way up to tier 3? No. So I don't know why anyone's asking us to check this. It's not going to change. He's close, though. Maybe if he just shot another deer and found a sheep, he'd be good. But soon, soon, my children. Don't get ahead of yourselves here. Oh, it's the Bao Chad time as well. <gasps> he got beaten to the punchline. Fly, little fishies. Fly. Little fishiers. Fly. Luckily, there are no defenses here. Salami, uh, when's the next deer coming, actually? Because he needs a second one, a 485. One deer isn't good enough. Soon, soon. Dude, the bow chat play, though. That's big, actually, out of core. I think this is where he looks to end him. The white stupa has been rebuilt. Defenses are being rebuilt as well. But Tyloma is far from out of the woods yet. And he is surrounded by wolves on all sides, remember. West, east, south, even north. Like, technically, he's the centralized player here. Now, moving forward. Sizable force on the move from Zenic. Has an upgrade. Whoa, 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 whoa. Zen Zenic, Zenic. Bro. Okay, I I'm going to blame this on the confusion of Elite because I don't understand this, but why is it that they have Silver Hats in Veteran and they have Silver Hats in Elite when everything else gets Gold Hats? I'm going to forgive Zenic for this one. It's easy to overlook. You know he must have overlooked it as well because he's going for every other tech imaginable instead of just getting the upgrade for his Lombos. Same with no Volley. Volley is such a cheap resource for what it does as well. 500 resource when you have this many Lombowmen? It's a missed trick for Zenic. Looks like Tyloma was able to get his fishing boys out. Zenic, once again, just doesn't have any defenses here. 
It's more or less just a preventative, a deterrent, if anything, as he's fully fixated on Salami. I'm starting to wonder if Zenek is maybe a higher rank than we imagined. We'll have to see as he keeps moving forward. However, the fights aren't going to get easier. You can see the switch up now coming out from good old Salami as he is going into the Streltsy. A very bulky unit, 150 health. Not to mention the heavy damage they dish. And I wonder, if I look at Crackety's resources, just needs to get on that stone. It could be an option, especially with the trade starting to kick up. So higher and higher volumes. In fact, if we look at the count right now, up to 11 at the time. Let's go continue to escalate. Cool. Has shifted his base further south. Wants to make sure he's not going to be maybe flanked here. What? <laughs> All right, drunk Chinese villager there. Hmm. So Krakadi isn't fully using his farms. I think this is because of his reliance on fishing. He's pretty much pop capped. So you can see he's got like most people on wood and food. And it looks like he must have a build for somewhere. Yeah, he's building up all the walls. He's actually getting the Great Wall Gatehouse. This makes a lot more sense. So I think it's just because he's been building up infrastructure. He hasn't been manning all the farms. Could be getting a lot more food here. He does need to sort his gold though. Gold is a really big concern. I think that's where the rest of the villages are. They're probably shifting towards some sort of new gold line. Uh, looking on the map, there's not much left for him though. Yeah, actually, there's, there's none. Like, you can't, even if you play for this gold vein, like, you can't build a mining camp here. But you can build bow chads. And I was wondering when this was going to happen. So this could begin to box Salami in. He might be coming under pressure from two players at the same time. In the meantime, find the south side. Whoa, wait, 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 what? Core's like, okay, thanks for protecting me. For some reason, as it looks like the timing has hurt Tyloma. Crackity here was just in the area. It was just the wrong time. And now, as a result, it's actually going to be Tyloma that gets punished. Oh, no. All of a sudden, Crackity will just reset. Doesn't want to interrupt the balance of power just yet. Doesn't want to offer up an opportunity here, considering Core has shown himself burning through all the structures. Notably, the outpost that were built up by Crackity to defend his trade network. In the meantime, Zenik, looking in the wrong places, doesn't quite know where Salami is just yet. Probably start to sniff it out soon. And you see Crackity kind of trying to be smart about this, right? He's trying to take away the wood in their territory first, so he has reserves. Could work out pretty nicely. Salami. I think he... Did he lose the chat? Oh, did he lose the chads? <gasps> did he get the chads? Oh my god, I think he killed the chads with the boom ships. Yeah, he did. He got the demo ships. Big play out, Salami. That was a good quick react. And that stings, actually. The timing of that is the worst for Crackity because Crackity now in a situation where he doesn't have much gold in reserve. And those bow chads are not cheap. 480 gold each. And now he's going to boom more. Wow, what a switch up from Salami. It looked like dead weight, but he turns it around and now he's going to do some serious damage, forcing Crackity entirely off of the water. Wow. Let's see if Salami can actually maintain that influence. It looks like Crackity might be done with water, but... This is part of Salami's plan, right? Like, if he wants to wonder victory eventually, he needs to control water. That's the way he does it. This could really just completely starve his opponents off and out of the game. And especially when they take fights like this, Crackity just threw away the army. He's quickly replacing it. Does have plenty of food to do so. He's trying to chip away at Core, and oh no, Core. Core, how many villagers are dead? Oh no. Dude, this is one of those in memory torch moments. Just, just wave your phone up in the air. Side to side, in memory of the peasants that once were, his core is shrinking up quick now down to 56 eco. And a lot of that is going to be on the sea. Oh, and I don't know if I can see a way back in at this rate, because he's in trouble. The only upside is Salami didn't bring land infantry with him down here. Now, with the pass guard coming in, what crack did he do? Please. Core, but why do you hate one? <laughs> He's just being teamed. They aren't even attacking each other anymore. 
that one initial attack, and it was almost like Crackety went, oh, wait, you're poor. <laughs> I'll just ignore you. <laughs> Don't kill the poor, kill the core. And that's exactly what he's doing now as he shifts in. Elite Arch is not a great solution out of core, but he can't afford it. He's gold capped. He's got zero gold to work with, which is why he has zero resistance to put up against the palace guard. And Crackety, well, he's backed away. He said, eh, eh, eh. I'll let you live for the moment. I'm kind of the shrug at this stage. He sees how dead in the water he is. He's like, I'll just back off, maintain the, the status quo, just in case, because someone has to be approaching a, a wonder victory soon, right? Like, the temptation has to be high. Oh, Green did actually go for the Wingard Palace, by the way. We, did, we talked about that detail later. I'm glad to see, like, I, I'm starting to think, like, every time I watch this guy and the things he's doing, I feel like he's a, high, a little bit higher and higher level of, of what we've been assuming. And he's starting to build that infrastructure to take out Salami, actually. But Salami, it's a lot of Streltsy and enough Bombards to blitz this entire base. It's not going to be an easy fight. And it looks like maybe Zenic, I think he already lost one of these fights. Well, things were happening in the south. It looks like he actually had his army wiped up here as well. Now, I know a lot of people are worried about these 42 vil counts for, uh, for Corp. I'd like to point out that... I've seen the way he AFKs in 2v2s. It's not uncommon for him at 36 minutes in the game to only have about 40 villagers, okay? So chill out. He's not done yet. He's been given a stay of execution by Crackety. Ooh, might not be the same from Salami, though. Moving in range on a Zenek. Zenek, what? 67 villagers. I take back what he said. This is looking more expected now. I can't believe he's got 67 villagers building one outpost. And his army is just getting wiped. Like, there's no doubt about that. The Bombards are going to clean up the infrastructure. The Streltsy, like, this is not how you fight Streltsy. Line formation. Use the line formation. Oh, no. All right, so Salami just got the whole island to himself. And that means Zenik is screwed because he's out of wood. And his army costs a lot of wood. Great migration back to the homeland, but I don't know what Zenic does next, folks. Um, plant trees, grow a new forest, maybe. Hope that your, your opponents are willing to wait. If you oh no, this is the worst case situation. The only good side is that right now Tyloma's not at home, but I think he's going to come back soon. Ah, oh, no, okay, guys, it's fine. You see, this is protected wood. Zenic is going to get rid of the uh, the protected little forest here. That'll float him about 1.5k wood max. Not even that. And then he's back in Awkward Town. Good to see him keeping the villages alive, though. I think it's very important to save all these villages when you have 20,000 surplus food. You know, because... But let's be real, right? Like, you know, you got to see these people more than just food, all right? Like, you don't want to dehumanize the situation. You probably named them all. Billy, Millie. Tilly, Dilly, Hilly, he's got a weird shaped head, they're always Illies, Nilly, one's called Nilly, Nilly's in there somewhere, wait, now in fairness he doesn't have the wood to afford this, but my hair is going to fall out, I'm going to just, I, I don't think I need to say anything, I think I just do this, and then I point to this, and then I do this. And then I point to this. And then I'm going to do this. Are we following? And then I'm going to point to this. Why? <laughs> no. And he needs gold as well. Zenik, no. I'm starting to think Zenik finishes his English games by 20 minutes. One way or another. And he has 62 mana on. Oh, All right, this is the let's check in on another player. I don't want to feel like I'm targeting someone here. Although I think everyone's going to target him when they see what his build is because it's going to be easy pickings in their eyes. Meanwhile, trying to be less easy. Ty Loma starting to flood out now. He's trying to get rid of all the infrastructure. He's getting paid to do so and starting to take good fights up against Crackety. He's Crackety. Uh, this is the Congo line of death, sir. One by one they go in and one by one they fall. This is not how I'd advise you take this fight as you're going to forfeit a lot of ground. And remember, 
you're up against a Mongol player, so you don't want him to access these farms. These farms are free grabs, right? You paid 75 wood, he tortures them easy peas and gets paid 50 resources in the process. Yeah, it uh, looks like Frontline is going to have to retreat. Another benefit you have when you are playing the Mongols is you can quick retreat away, right? Like, and it looks like there is no Yuan Dynasty, so you can't even argue you can easily gap close on these Yam up units, right? The Veron Archers move faster, in fact, than the Palace Guard that pursue them. And I can't help but keep poking my nose up north, expecting a little summon summon. Y'all know what I mean. Looks like Baochar was a little bit annoying. It looks like that's what snuck in there, but there's still just the wonder victory potential for Salami. Salami now discovering that water is a thing. Looking for his nice little rubber ring to float him. Uh, he's like, oh, maybe I need a transport ship instead. And I'm not sure this now ends well for Tsai Loma. I think, I think we're about to say au revoir to our fourth person here. As uh, this army looks pretty unanswered. It's grenadiers, it's hand cannoneers, it's everything that you fear. And then look at what's happening on the east side as well. No! Oh, Tsai Loma. I feel bad at this stage. A moment of silence for Ty. He went through so much here. The migration from the pressure of core, the survival in the north, limited resources, fighting back, almost eliminating core, and then finding himself now the meat in an undesirable sandwich here because the buns are just going to be buns of steel from the left and right side. And the man at arms count, I just don't even know how he deals with it. This composition, like this is the problem as well. The comp he built is designed to deal with the range formation of Prakadi. It is not designed to deal with the man at arms of Zedek. Goodness gracious. Zedek. Well, he's taking his time about this, but realistically, like you can just go hard in for it. It's just two landmarks to worry about. Step readout has snuck away though. And I think he's just going to park it somewhere and hope it doesn't get noticed. See how long that works out. Zenek, please, when I when I click on this, I swear to... Oh, no, he hasn't got it. He hasn't got it. Uh. That's not deep breaths because I'm stressed. That's just uh, that's me imitating Darth Vader because I wanted to come in and punish this guy right now. Like there needs to be some force choking going on over here. Like this, this is build the enclosures. Just build the damn enclosures. <laughs> Great migration. Tyler was just done with this game. <laughs> Cover and move. Cover and move. Oh, the problem is they see you, buddy. They see everything, and I don't think you're getting out. The villagers, everything. He says, sayonara, sucker, because you're done in this game. Cool. in the meantime, I think we already know what's coming from him. He's going to look to wipe out these buildings and build a million outposts and then go for a wonder victory. I can already sense it. There's an itching. There's a tingling. But he will need a lot of resources to do that. Slami, on the other hand, I think is about ready. He's still building up reserves. But he could at any stage. Like, he doesn't even need to fight right now. And, uh... Is this even safe to stream on, on Twitch? I, I'm not sure what their policy is on unnecessary violence. Because this looks like a lot of unnecessary violence to me. Then again, in, in fairness, if Ty is not willing to surrender, then is it unnecessary? A lesson must be taught here. As the Great Migration is a, a great degradation into nothingness here. Especially with the new line of troops coming in. Just a few grenadiers are just going to kill off all these villages. And it looks like time, as expected, is going to be our fourth player knocked out here. Landmark will be sniped in a matter of moments as well. And we are reaching Granny Boy status. And Krakadi, he's building up reserves for exactly that. So he can start to blitz through people's armies at this rate. A cute idea from Ty Loma. However, they have discovered the, the big honcho here. The only thing that matters. We're not going to focus on the poor villagers dying. You can hear the peppering as you get new. As tears do fall from your face. All that matters is this detail here. As we say, shh.
Wait, he's still alive? That, okay, I was about to say, no, you're dead. <laughs> that was a weird delay. Number one down, though. Four remaining. Salami. I wonder if his hesitation to go wonder. A lot of wondering. Uh, more comes from his lack of naval control, right? Because at the end of the day, like, you can be outdone by the warships that you don't have access to, right? Because you're going to need build lodges. And all the boom ships to get rid of the chads, like, if you're dealing with a lot of attack ships, that's just not going to work. And it looks like that time waster has allowed time for Zenek to approach now. And he's building a proxy base down here. In <laughs> I love this from Zenek. I got bullied by Salami. So now I'm going to try to take one of you. What happens when you get bullied by these guys? Do you retreat to this island over here and then get bullied by deer? I, I guess we'll have to find out. At the moment, it would take decent trades as it is mainly just spearmen being pushed by the Chinese player. However, when the Grenadiers arrive, that's when you're in trouble, Tom. So you do need to be a little bit careful. And it looks like the Bombards are being targeted out. He's ignoring the Grenadiers, which could be a mistake. However, with only a few here, it looks like it's going to be irrelevant damage done. And... <gasps> yes! Get rid of him! Okay, maybe, maybe that's a bit unfair. This is the Zerv! You should have had it in close. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be that harsh. This is just mean salami. With nine bombards, he's just plowing through. He's not going to waste any time. Landmarks are a full and quick for poor Zenny boy. Zenik. He looked so promising once upon a time. And Zenik. Well, he hasn't enclosed his farms, but don't worry. You're about to be enclosed, entombed in a grave created by Salami. Moment of silence for the Zenny boy that was, as we are about to lose a fifth player here. Quickly, the numbers are dwindling, and as expected, only three remain. All of them pro-level players, all in the top 100 on the ranked leaderboards at the time of recording. And very far away from each other now. And I wonder if Salami is... Licking his lips and shaking his hips and looking to pounce on a wonder victory here. Because now would be the time. Only two players remain against you. And one of them is Kor. Who hasn't built cavalry. Which means he's never coming out of his base. <laughs> oh, it's about to get better. Because actually it looks like Kor might get eliminated at this rate. Crackety's moving in now. Small group, small group of Grenies, not too much. And I'm wondering, has anyone gone for the special resource yet? It doesn't look like it. No, I, I think nobody's going for special resources. We're not at that point yet. He doesn't really need more gold. He's pretty good at gold. He needs stone. And it looks like Crackety is going to blitz for a lot of these troops. It's only archers after all. Yam allows him to disengage, but the nest of bees is a problem unanswered. And with no one else here to interfere, this looks like this is going to be a Chinese-sided affair. And then it's just going to be blue on yellow. And then Salami, like, it's still a wonder victory potential, right? Like, he's pretty stacked. Resource banks have been building fast. And... In a one-on-one, -on -one, it, it's going to be very difficult for Crackety to close ground fast enough here. Where is Cause on? Okay, they're, they're just buying time. I, I wouldn't really say they're buying time. They're more selling themselves out here. Maybe Cause spending this time typing in the chat. Please let me live. Please let me live. Right now, he's going Crackety. Hear me out. Salami's going to get a wonder victory. Let's work together for a better tomorrow. And all Crackety does is hits the enter and types China number one and continues. Mongols at least number one in the static defenses will stabilize for the moment, but... Yeah, you're just going nowhere. And while this is happening, you know that Crackety, he's escalating his eco. He's never getting weaker. Up to 36 traders now. Resource bank, build him fast. Salami, if he wants to beat his opponent to the punchline, it's now or never. Stone being gathered up. He is at the point. Needs to get some more, though. It's still the stone lagging behind, and he's barely finding any on the map right now. Meanwhile, when we look at Crackety, Crackety, he still has that same stone issue, but he has so much surplus food and gold that he can trade across on. 
Oh, Slami, we finally reached that high trade hat. 206. There you go, folks. So changing from tier two bounty to tier three in this situation, I think it was 192, was it? Around there. Went up a sizable quantity. Seriously needs all that stone though. You see, you see he wants it. You can actually genuinely see he wants it with all the stone gathering. And the funny part is at this rate, the timing on it, it's gonna be a one-on-one -on -one because Krakeny is close to eliminating Core. Core parking his deer stone right in the back corner so he can try to dodge an insta blitz. And here we go. In fact, we better prep this when it starts coming. You know the Wonder Victory is on its way soon. Rush in with the Rams. In onto the outpost. One of the TCs already on fire. Core shriveling up against this damage. The Grenadiers, the Nets, the Bees. Core sees the right in the wall. He waves the white flag. And now we have a one on one. And Salami, the moment he's been waiting for now, he needs to just beat his opponent to the punchline for an easy cruise mode victory. And Crackety, with no stone gathered, doesn't have the same potential. In fact, Salami. Right now, he's maybe having second thoughts, thinking may maybe I can just kill him. That is quite the bold idea, though, because you are up against the Chinese. And we have to remember the Chinese have a lot more landmarks. In fact, right now, Krakadi is one short of the maximum, up at seven landmarks. So it won't be easy. But it looks like he is committed to the idea. Marching across now. I don't think you can quite walk across there. But the bow check. The timing, the timing, the timing, the timing. Don't reveal it, Crack Crackety, no. You're revealing it. Wait for the garrison. Why would you do that? Oh my God. What a missed opportunity here. Crackety, he could have actually got maximum value. Could you imagine the bombards all being sunk there? What a missed opportunity from Crackety. Wow. I mean, maybe he was paranoid that they would sail away before he could react, but his opponent doesn't see. I think he didn't respect how much vision he had compared to Salami. Missed opportunity. And now, look, yeah, this is now what happens. He'll just shift south. He'll garrison inside and he'll move across. Could you imagine? Look at that right now. If you had sunk that, if you'd waited for that one transpo ship, over 9,000 resources gone in the blink of an eye. Something the Bowchad can guarantee with its heavy damage. Now the Bowchads can't do anything. They can't even stop his opponent from getting across. That's a heavy pop cap investment. 18 year pop cap is locked in here. In fact, even more. Oh my. What? Sir? That is 30 pop cap locked into C units that aren't stopping anything right now. Because he's in. It's March 4 time. It's party time. Still, no wonder victory attempt out of either player. But into the base he goes, and Salami really just cuts right down the center. Wraparound coming in for the pass guard. Pretty speedy boys here. But now the Streltsy stand their ground. They're going to make short work. The Grenadiers not getting maximum impact. Actually taking out the one or two at the front instead of targeting the cluster at the back. At least the Grenadiers aren't going to trade as favorably as you would like here. Bombards in the meantime are not tying out the nest of bees, but there's enough Streltsy to flood on through, and that's going to be a heavy hit into the eco lines. You need to react fast. Crackety getting more troops across now. A little bit flimsy. Is he going to go for the Wonder Victory? That is the detail we're looking for here. Well, the answer, no. Nowhere near enough stone to do so. I to mention his wood is also looking pretty fine out at this stage. Bombard trade-outs are going to go the way of Salami as he wills in range. The Chinese ones. More infrastructure going down. Remember that Salami can instantly replace his army. Look at the reserves he's built up. This is looking all too trivial now. Crackety, he stretched himself thin, far too thin. There's plenty of wood in this area, but he hasn't been taking it. And it means that he's going to find himself wood capped very fast here. One landmark going down. As he goes deeper, it's going to be a heavier wood burden to replace what was lost for Crackety. His bow chads, I don't even, like, what they even do at this stage. I wonder if they can get a one... Uh, can they get a landmark snipe victory? <sighs> no. I think bow chads... Yeah, Ooh, actually 10.8. He reached in and he killed the high trade house before. I actually think he might be. A, the, the question mark for me is the high armory. The high armory might be just deep enough that he can't reach it with the bow trance. If he can reach that, he can reach everything though. And he can actually landmark snipe salami with these big bad ba badasses here. It's going to take a long time to roll around though. These are not fast moving ships. 
He's definitely got time on his side. Oh, and it looks like Salami is going to decrease that time available. And he realizes it's too close to the coast. I like this maneuver. Because if he actually popped the Wonder there, then Bowchards would have ended him. But now, it might be a little bit too deep. I think there's still a world in which the Bowchards can reach. We're going to find out quickly as well, because Salami is invested. He's building it up. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And Crackity, see? Crackity knows. Crackity. I think he can reach. I think he can actually reach with double here. I actually think double Bowchuan could reach this. It's going to be close. Oh, my God. And he's still rapping on the east side, right? Or did he back? He backed off. He's actually just committing to this now. He's moving in range. Let him complete it. Let him complete it. Oh, can he reach? Can he reach? I mean, you wait for him to complete either way, right? Because then he can't get the resources back at all. And that's going to be a heavy sink for Salami if he loses it. Let's see. Starts to get through the defenses. If nothing else, this will be a staging point to move into his base from. And remember these bombards, by the way. The bombards are outraged by the child Beltrads. Crackity. Uh-oh. He's unstoppable. You need to switch up. You need sprinkles right now. ASAP, in fact. And there it is. Shutter triggers are being researched. Banded arms will be beneficial as well. The Bauchuans. It's going to be tight. Can they reach, though? Come on. Come on. Wiggle it in. Wiggle it in. It's like trying to squeeze a salami through a keyhole here. But it looks like it's not enough. He can't actually reach the Cathedral of Tsar. <gasps> oh my. Oh my, oh my. So this just got mighty interesting. Crackity needs a proxy base into a push. It's his best opportunity because trying to push across with transpo ships alone might not be fast enough. In fact, I'm certain it won't be quick enough. Slami still with some weakness though because he's slow to rebuild the army and look at the switch up he's prepping for. He's going for horse arches. Realizes that gold is a limiting factor now. Wood and food, less so. Still has plenty of wood in reserve on the other side of the island. are on the way. Still plenty of time, though. It's not like the Wonder's going to tick down in a second here. Still 13-plus minutes away from a victory for Salami. Crackity, I really want to see him pull those villagers. Like, look at his resource bank. Wood is... I think that's the only reason he's not building the proxy base, but pull a, wood, like, pull a villager line over here, blow up this wooden fortress, take control of this area, and then build a proxy base. Instead... Any attempt to get wood on the mainland is just being interrupted by small bands of Streltsy marching around. And Salami, as a result, is buying more time. Crackity. I mean, this is the other frustration, folks. Think about it this way. If he's got wood issues, right? If he can't quite get that wood number up, might it have been because of the Bauchuan investment that has now done nothing? I think so. I most definitely think so. Strauss still just unanswered, harassing him. Ay, ay, ay. And now the Supreme Battalion ensuring that that's never a threat. And this is, the, this is the other issue of not having the proxy base. If your plan is to now Normandy this, if you're going to beach in Normandy, rush this, you're just going to get sniped. These Supreme will take you out before you even reach the land. And that's going to be heavy losses with each of those sunk ships full of troops. Troops that you can't afford to lose because of your positioning right now. <laughs> they do nothing. They actually do nothing. They, 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 they do not look intimidating whatsoever in this game. Ay, ay, ay. And all this time bought. Look what Salami's now done. Replenished. He's almost full cap again. Passive gold. Decent enough to, to scale him at the same time. To get these additional sprinkles. And oh my, oh my. Uh... Good luck catching them. Slami may be prematurely revealing his hand. Could actually use it to snipe out the transpo ships. Bauchuan do go in and find a target, though. And uh-oh, because you revealed your hand, now they're close enough to the shore to cover the assault. Crackity is about to get on land. That's a lot of bombards as well. That could be an instant blitz down. Oh my goodness. Salami, you just offered up an opportunity. An opportunity that Crackity is going to pounce upon. Marching in. Delivers the troops. None of them are sniped. The Bombards are out and in play. 
And there's so many of them. Eight insta strikes here. No villages to repair. Salami, mistakes have been made. And the wonder is gone. Salami loses his win condition. And he doesn't have the resources to replenish his forces after this fight. Meanwhile, Crackity sustained himself. It's going to be an insta GG out. Salami, what on earth was that? The gluttony, the refusal to show patience, the snipe. The transpose as they came in cost him the game. And because Salami sacrifices so much of his economy, so much of his village account to build up that defense force, he has no way of continuing through. Crackity will once again do what is so typical here with a Chinese victory in the Mega Random Nomad Deathmatch.